Thanks for joining us for week three of Ask Bill. The first question comes from Victoria. Bill, the company I work for has recently started using your impact system. I think it's a wonderful and powerful tool, but I do have one concern. As an inside sales rep, I do not have the advantage of sitting across from my potential client. I need to get the decision maker on the phone and get him interested within seconds, or I don't get the chance to move forward and close the deal. I'm calling on someone who knows nothing about me or my product. I certainly use the pre-calling stage and investigate before making my call, and once on the phone, I also employ the meeting step. The area I struggle with is asking a stranger questions before he even sees the product. I sell advertising for a vertical search engine. I feel as if it is more effective to enter the probing stage as I take them through the demo. It feels more natural and organic. This, of course, means breaking your rule of jumping steps. I'm wondering if there's a way to combine them. Thoughts? There are three critical portions of the impact system that are essential for you in the type of business you're in. One is the statement of intention, a primary bonding statement, and finally, the direct value statement. Now, each of these are often overlooked in the initial training because they're so precise to specific applications. Yours happens to be one of those. Now, remember, a statement of intention is simply, like, is simply something like this. What I'd like to accomplish today is to help you discover what it is that you want and see if there's a way that we might be able to be of help to you. So what you really want to say is something like this. What I'd like to do is to determine if there's some way that we might be able to be of some service to you relative to advertising. I'm not so sure if we are the right organization for you, but I'll guarantee you this. If I can ask you a few questions and find out if it works, if it won't, we can go ahead and move on. If it does, I'd like to share with you what it is that we do. The statement of intention ties in this concept of want, but the direct value statement is critical. Now listen to the direct value statement. We help organizations like you advertise more effectively. We do this through a vertical search engine optimization process. In order to see if this might be of some, of some value to you, do you mind if I ask you a few questions? I can guarantee you that after, after those questions, we're not able to be of any great value to you. We can certainly move on, and I'll understand. The next question comes from Louise Costa. Dear Bill, my company provides excellent accounts receivable management and collection services, and we use direct marketing sales strategies. Management is very picky about the requirements to sales representatives to daily abide by the following activities. 20 hot knock, 60 phone calls cold. 25 stuffer, drop off literature under doors or similar, 33 mailers, a total of 750 freshly new contact every single week, yet they seem not to encourage a lot of follow-up on all this contacting. I find it hard to reach a total of 750 fresh new contacts every week without generating a lot of maintenance work, and in a week you are following up. You can't meet your goal of another 750 freshly new contacts again. I read somewhere in a Hoover's paper that these cold calling techniques are a thing of the past. What do you think? All right, let me answer this a couple of ways. First of all, I think that Hoover's is probably right. There are other technologies. Now, that doesn't mean that, that someone shouldn't do it or a company's wrong for doing it, but it is somewhat of a dated philosophy. Here's the other issue. You've got 750 contacts. That's 3,000 contacts a month. So here's my question. Are you simply a dispenser of information for direct response marketing? In other words, you hand these things out or contact someone, or are you expected to actually go through a sales process? Because the maintenance work you're talking about is in all likelihood answering questions or making a sale. The truth of the matter is there are less expensive ways to get the information out and then have salespeople respond to them. Or is your primary purpose one of simply dispensing the information, then people automatically respond to it and sign up for whatever it is you sell on the spot? You've got a real time management challenge. Quite frankly, the numbers don't add up, and I'm not so sure that I can tell you it's totally wrong because it depends on the philosophy. Are you a direct marketing dispensing machine, or are you a salesperson? And only you and your company can answer that question. Okay, and our last question for the week comes from Susan. My clients want the lowest price, period. I have sold our services to combat the pricing issue and have walked away from clients that only care about the cheapest price and have business relationships up the wazoo. I even tailored my offerings to domestic products in an effort to persuade them to buy American. 
even to buy from local manufacturers in our industry to improve our own state's economy, Michigan, but with no success. Any suggestions? Or is it a matter of the funnel theory, and I'm not putting enough numbers into the funnel? Good question, and let me give you very quick answers. One, go to our website and order my book, How to Sell at Margins Higher Than Your Competitors. Uh, it's hundreds of pages on how to deal with this issue. So I can't answer it for you real quickly, but it's all in there. However, at the risk of sounding too commercial, let me now give you some answers. Unfortunately, lots of people don't care whether it's made in America or made in Michigan. I think you've found that out. What you've got is you've got people who are price-driven. And the reason why they're price-driven is you either allow your product to become a commodity or you're in such a situation that you don't differentiate what you sell from everyone else, therefore there's no reason to pay anymore. You have to understand, some people will always buy the lowest price, and unfortunately they're not always your best, your best uh, prospect. The real issue is simply this. Sales is much more a function of margin than it is of volume. You need to differentiate, find the right market, t market target to those people, Make sure that you communicate what your differential advantage is, sell value, and it not, is not necessarily where it was manufactured. Sad but true, it's a unique selling proposition that you have to develop. Thanks, Bill. We'll do this again next week. Thank you.